In this video, I'm going to show you how you can design a teaser section for your website inside the Figma. You're going to learn how to design this layout using frame in order to combine multiple layers with each other and how you can define the resizing behavior of the element in order to create and design a responsive layout. I'm going to do the same thing in the Framer and Webflow and I'm going to publish two other videos in which you can learn more about this topic and how you can manage to achieve the same result inside the Framer and Webflow. This will help you to have a better understanding of all these tools and of course you can have a better comparison. You can check those videos by clicking the pop-up banner on top or you can find the link to those videos in the description of this video as well. Now, before we go further, I would like to ask you, if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share your thoughts and opinion in the comment section with me. My name is Kian, here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. I usually start a design process by collecting the asset and the basic elements that I would have in my final design, final element and component that I would like to have in my user interface. For example, today I'm gonna make a teaser card in which we would have an image, a headline text, and of course a CTA button. So let's collect the foundational and basic element that we need to design the final component. So first of all, I need an image. So I'm gonna use the Unsplash plugin to import one. I'm gonna just randomly select one of these images and then import them inside my Figma file by clicking on them. I'm gonna resize it to make it a little bit smaller because the initial size is very huge. The next basic element that I need here is the text. So I'm gonna make one headline text and then the next element would be the CTA. I'm gonna just duplicate this headline text and change the text to CTA. These are all very raw basic element. There is no styling yet on them. So after I collect all these elements, it's time to work on their styling. The very first thing that I would like to work on is my CTA. For designing a CTA, we need a text layer, which we already have here. And of course, another element which we can actually define the background color of the CTA button that we have with the help of that element. Right now, for example, I add one rectangle shape here, which will give me this possibility to change its background color. And I can use this element as a background of my CTA button. However, this is not the best way to design and create a button in the Figma. And the reason is because we do not have so much control on resizing behavior of this element. And eventually we cannot make a really complex relationship between the text that we have here and the background shape that we have uh, in terms of resizing behavior and of course the positioning when we change one of these elements. I made another video in which I explain explicitly uh, what are the differences between frame groups and section and how we can use auto layout in order to design complex or even simple layouts. And you can watch that video by clicking on the pop-up banner on top. Uh, this will give you a better understanding of what exactly is happening right now in this video. So the first thing I would do is to work a little bit on the styling of the CTA text. So I'm gonna change the font size on the 18 pixel and the font styling on bold. Now I would like to add a frame and then add this text layer into my frame and then I have some properties in the frame, such as the background color, which will help me to decide which kind of uh, background color I would like to have my CTA. The other thing that I would like to have is the possibility of defining the gap and a space between the text and the border of that frame, which we call it padding. I know that in the auto layout, we have such properties. So first thing I need to do is to uh, create one frame, add this text, layer to that frame and then apply auto layout on that frame. We have a shortcut for these actions. We can use the combination key shift A and as you can see, we made automatically one frame and applied auto layout on that. We can rename this frame to button. While we are selecting the button, we can come here in the auto layout section in the properties panel and set the horizontal padding on 24 pixel. I'm going to set the vertical padding on 16 pixel as well. The next thing we need for our button our CTA is the background color. So we need to select the button again. And here in the fill section of the properties panel, I'm going to select on the plus button, which will add a background color to the button frame. Now we can change this background color to 
uh, maybe pure dark in my case and as you can see our very basic CTA is ready but before we go further I would like to ask you to check the resizing behavior of the child layers and the parent layers whenever you use the auto layout and frame sometimes it happened that you would have some strange behavior when you kind of combine multiple layers with each other so get sure to check everything here in this case I'm gonna select the text layer and I'm going to start to increase the length of the text and see how the bottom frame is going to react to these changes right now everything seems to be okay so we are good here so in the next step I would like to work on the styling of my headline text in the teaser so I'm going to select the headline text layer and here in the text section of the properties panel I'm going to to set the font size on 24 pixel and the font weight on bold. In the next step, I would like to combine the headline text layer with the CTA button layer uh, for two main reasons. The first reason is that I would like to kind of have a better organization in my design file. So it's better to combine the basic layers that we can combine with each other in order to have less complexity here in the layer list. The other reason is that I would like to have more controls on the resizing behavior of each element in compared to their parent layer, especially when it comes to the final component, which in this case we will have a teaser. Uh, we need to think that what will happen if we start to resize the teaser itself what would happen to their child layers so that's the reason that we need to combine these two layers using a frame and apply auto layout on it in order to have access to properties which will help us to create complex relationship and resizing behavior so i'm going to select these two layers and use the combination key shift a to make a frame add these two layers into that frame and apply auto layout automatically on them here you can see the frame number one is the frame that we made i'm going to rename frame number one to content section and then here in the auto layout properties panel section i'm going to set the gap between the headline and the cta to 32 pixel and of course i would like to have some vertical and horizontal padding for the horizontal padding i'm going to set it on 16 and then here I'm going to click on this individual padding option and for the button padding I'm going to set it also on 16 pixel. For now I'm going to set the top padding on zero later on we will realize why I did this. Before I go for the next step I need to also get sure that we have a proper resizing behavior for child layer in this case the headline text and the CTA layer. Uh, in compared to their parent layer which is the content section frame to show you what i exactly mean i'm going to select the content section frame and i'm going to resize it horizontally you can see if i select the child layer here the headline uh, there is no relationship yet between the size of the headline and the content section itself in order to have a responsive behavior i'm going to follow this logic all the child layers need to horizontally follow their parent layers when we do any resizing on the parent layer. So in this case, for example, I'm going to select the headline text. And here in this section, the sizing section of the properties panel, I'm going to set the horizontal resizing behavior and fill the container. In this way, if I start to resize the parent layer, which is the content section, you can see that the headline layer is also going to follow the parent very properly. The next logic to create a responsive layout is that all parent layers need to follow their child layers in the vertical axis. So to create that, I'm going to select the content section, which is the parent layer. And here for the vertical resizing behavior, I'm going to set it on a hog the container. In this way, we basically create a responsive behavior, which means, for example, if we increase the length of the headline text, you can see the main parent element, apparently, or the content section, is going to follow their, their child, which is basically the headline, uh, very properly. So nothing is getting broken. And of course, when we resize the content section as a parent layer, you can see that the headline is also going to follow uh, the parent layer very properly. So this is a way that you can create a responsive layout. Okay, now the next step, I would like to combine my text layer with the content section for the same reasons that I mentioned in a previous step. So I'm going to select these two layers and use the combination key shift A to create a new frame and apply auto layout on it. I'm going to rename this frame to teaser, which basically is going to be my last layer I'm making for creating our teaser card. Maybe I rename it to teaser card to have a better understanding. Now in the auto layout section, I'm going to set the alignment to the left top. 
and of course the uh, layout type should be vertical because we want to position each child layers in the uh, vertical orientation i'm going to set the gap between the image and the content section to 16 pixel and that was the reason that i didn't set any top margin for my content section because i wanted to add it as a gap to the parent layer that they exist in now we're basically done we need to just take care of the child layers resizing behavior and their parent layer the size and behavior. So what we are going to do, first of all, we need to follow the same logic that I mentioned. I'm going to select the teaser card, and here I'm going to get sure that the vertical resizing behavior is on hug. In this way, no matter how long the text would be, uh, the teaser card is going to hug the content. Other way around, we need to get sure that the child layers also have a proper resizing behavior, as we mentioned before. So I'm going to select the image, and I'm going to get sure that the horizontal resizing behavior is on fill the container. I'm going to select the content section, and I'm going to get sure that the horizontal resizing behavior has the same value, fill the container. Now I'm going to select the teaser uh, card, and you can see if I start to resize this parent layer, all the child layers are going to behave properly. The last thing that I would like to do is to just add a background color to this teaser card layer, which is going to be the background color of the teaser. So I'm going to select that layer and come here in the fill section in the properties panel and click on plus button. Of course, we will see that the headline text is not going to be visible. So I'm going to select that layer and then here from the fill section, change the font color to pure black. And before we go further, I would like to just select the teaser card one more time and add a corner radius. I'm going to add 12 pixel corner radius to my final teaser card. However, you can see that in here in this bottom corners, we have this corner radius, but in the top, we do not have it. And the reason is that this property is the corner radius. Uh, we cannot create any relationship between child la layers and parent layers, which means that the child layers in this case, the image is not going to follow at the same corner radius. But we, there is one option we can do. We can select the parent layer and here uh, check on, on the clip content. In this way, we basically say that uh, the parent layer should mask all the content within itself. In this way, you can see that the corners are also fine. And at the end, before we go further, I would like to also add um, another extra effect to my teaser card. I will come to the effects section in the properties panel, click on the plus button, and add one drop shadow. I will increase the blurness to something higher than 24, maybe 24 pixel itself even, and reduce the uh, transparency of this shadow color to 15 percent right now you won't see the effect and the shadow here but later on when i add this teaser uh, component or the teaser card to my layout which has a white background you will see the shadow there as well in the next step i will use the teaser card in order to create my teaser section including of three teaser cards next to each other with the specific amount of gap between them but before i go further and use this as a card that we have already, I would like to convert it to a component. In this way, it will be much easier for us later on if we want to change the design of this teaser card in our design file. We don't have to go everywhere that we used it in order to change something and apply those changes on those elements individually. We can just apply these changes in the master component and it will be automatically applied on all the instances uh, that we used and made from this master component. To make a component, I'm going to select the teaser card and click on this icon on top, or I can use the combination key Control Alt K. Now you can feel and see that we kind of convert this layer to a component when you see this purple uh, border around it, and of course this icon next to the uh, frame name. There are different ways to make instances from one master component. You can just make a copy easily from that master component, and this copied version is basically an instances, uh, which is going to follow the master component if you apply any changes. For example, you can see easily that if I start to resize the image uh, element inside my teaser, it will have impact on the instance as well. The other way is to go to the asset list, asset panel, and here in the asset list, you can see all the components that you have in your design file, and you can drag and drop any of those components into your design canvas and basically make a new instance. These are the two ways that you can make a new instances. 
You can also see the difference between instance and master component by this indicator next to the name of the layers in the layer list. Now that I have three teasers in my design canvas, I'm going to select all of them and then use the commission key shift A to make a frame and apply auto layout on that frame. I'm going to rename this frame number one to teaser section and then I'm going to add vertical and horizontal padding and of course I'm going to add the background color here from the fill section I'm just going to have a white background color I forgot actually to set the gap between these teasers to 24 you can have access to it from the auto layout section I'm going to set it on 24 pixel and then we are done Okay, I hope you learned something new in this video. And if it was so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share your opinion or doubt in the comment section. At the end, I would like to mention one more time that there are two other videos in which you can learn how to do the same thing inside the Webflow and Framer. So don't forget to watch those videos as well. You can find the link to those videos in the description of this video as well. So let's learn together and see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.